What's up everybody, Pumpkin here. So I haven't done a YouTube video in a while. I've been busy, I suppose. Uh, I was in Poland for about a week for Challenger and since then uh, I've thought about doing <clears throat> some of the new expansion uh, like card reviews, uh, but I decided not to because I missed like 60-70% of them while I was at Challenger. Um, so I decided I was going to wait until the last day just because what I didn't want to do is do one video that caught up on like a good chunk of them and then do a couple more videos after. So I decided, eh, we'll just wait for the day before and we'll just do a massive video with all the reviews, uh, especially because one of the frustrating things about doing card reviews for new expansions is, well, uh, sometimes you can't really fully understand how good a card is uh, until you've seen all the cards. Um, and it's the type of thing where I might rate a card, like, really, really good, but it doesn't seem good, uh, at that time, and the card becomes much better later on. An example of this would be, like, Draco Turtle. When Draco Turtle was announced or revealed, um, it seemed pretty underwhelming, but obviously with Iris Shade in the game, while well, it's a different story, the card becomes very, very strong. Um, so for that reason, waiting is typically better, so... Uh, yeah, we're gonna do a card review. I did it on stream, so I have, um, that for you guys today. Uh, I'm not doing a standalone re-record, just because they do take a while, and my voice is kind of shot from stream, if you can't hear it, uh, already. Um, I do do a star system this time. Uh, normally, I haven't done this in the past, but I decided, why not? It makes it a little bit more engaging for chat. Basically, one star means unplayable. It will see zero play. Two stars is, it might see some play, um... Maybe down the road, the archetype gets some more uh, love, and eh, maybe it'll see play here and there in a deck. Three stars is average. It's just an average card. It'll see play here and there. Uh, four stars is a solid card. You're going to see this in a lot of decks in that specific faction, and five stars is auto-include, or auto-include in a specific uh, archetype. So some of the cards are like 100% auto-include in a very specific archetype. So typically I ended up rating them five stars, even though they're not auto-include in every faction. Um, but I think that's understandable just because, well, not all factions play the same, or sorry, not all archetypes within a faction play the same way. So take that as you will. Uh, without further ado, let's hop right into the card review. All right, first card, Stunning Blow SK Bronze, four provisions. Uh, damage a unit by four if it has armor, increased damage by seven. Uh, we're getting a lot of cards with armor, so this is consistently going to be doing, uh, more than four damage. Question is, is that good enough? Um, I think this card will be good in discard SK because it's fodder to discard, and if your opponent does play a card that needs to be removed with armor, it's quite good. Um, but I don't think, like, discard SK didn't get any tools, right? So, I, I, I think it's... I, if I if we we're gonna use the star rating, I think it's three star. It's an average card. It's playable. It's not amazing. It's not terrible. It's okay. You'll see it every now and then. It's not bad. Next card is Greater Brother Syndicate. Seven provisions. Ten strength. Four armor. Insanity. V two gain two armor. Expose. Destroy self. Um, expose. I, I mean, okay. I guess we'll just go over the keywords uh, when we get to them. But expose is basically if it loses all armor, if it's exposed. Um, so obviously, if you're playing against a faction or a deck that has more removal or more damage, um, you're gonna want to be using the insanity and knocking off some HP so that you can have more armor to increase its survivability. This is a nice card to play at the end of the round you never want to play this early because i do think people are going to be playing iris shade and uh Def sapper both of which strip off all armor so no matter how big you get this it'll knock off all armor fun combo you can play this use insanity get it down to two and then bdm it pog i don't think that's very good but you can do it if you want 16 point bdm and a bunch of armor cool um I think sappers are going to be auto-include or like 80 to 90% included in most decks just because they're insane. Uh, there is a good chunk of armor and they're going to get good value a lot of the times uh, and they're going to get insane value on this card. And for that reason, I don't think this card is going to be auto-include. Uh, if Iris Shade and Sapper did not exist in the game, I think this card would be a four-star card. But because those cards exist... I, th I I do think it'll see play, though. I, I think you play this towards the end of a round, and it's a nice 10 for 7, which is quite good. I think it's like a 3-star card. Um, 
it, it's average. It will see some play. It's a two-star card if, like, Sapper starts being played in every single deck, and then they just hold Sapper for the end of the game, in which case this card is, like, a two, maybe a one. Uh, not maybe not not one. Uh, probably a two. So meta dependent. Um, two or three stars. I do think sappers are going to see a shit ton of play. So not too excited for this card, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, next card we have defender. Defender is a new mechanic for uh, this expansion. It is essentially a taunt. Basically, if you play a five point or a four point Ron Warrior on the melee row, and you have this card on that row, your opponent cannot target. Uh, that Ron Warrior um, until you kill this card. The three ways of removing Defender or like mitigating Defender is uh, Purify. Purify knocks off a status. Defender is considered a status. Uh, you can kill it, right? So this card has effectively 12 strength. So you can just do 12 damage, which is really hard, but you could in theory do it. Um, and the third option is move it. If you move it to the ranged row, you now have access to the melee row, and you can uh, start targeting those cards. Granted, it is kind of like a soft removal because they can start utilizing the defender on the ranged row. So movement is the worst of the three, but it is typically going to be the cheapest. So do that however you want. Locks will not work on this card because it's not... Uh, it is a status. Locks don't work on status. So just like uh, if you adrenaline rush or you have any kind of Unit was resilient. Lock does nothing against it, whereas Purifying does. So, no, you cannot lock Defender off. How good is this card? Five stars. Um, you're going to play this card in basically every monster deck because you have Thrive cards. You can now play Neckers with this. Um, this card is very good. Yep. The only scenario this card is not seen play in monster decks is if you're playing a point slam like Gurnacore deck and nobody is running any removal. If nobody is running any removal, then there's no reason to protect like your Neckers. Um, I don't think that's going to be the case. People typically are, do play removal. Um, this is a very good card. I think I can pre-rate all the defender cards in the game five stars um, because the effect is insane. Right. This goes across the board for every defender. If you have any cards that are worth protecting, defender is a five-star card. Just defender, easy five. Um, this card is very good. Curse of Corruption tech. Yeah, so because of cards like this, I think people are going to consider running Heat Wave uh, and maybe Curse of Corruption. I think Curse of Corruption will be good because there are some very tall cards. Um, Assimilate, the new Assimilate card that gets plus two. Is going to be very good. Um, and SK now has more ways to go really tall, like uh, Draco Turtle and Iris Shade. So I do think Curse of Corruption will be a card that sees play. Next card is a Scoia'tael card, Dwarf Berserker. Four provisions, two strength, five armor. Barricade, this is another mechanic. Essentially, if this unit has armor, have uh, do the ability. So at the end of the turn, damage self by one, then damage a random enemy unit by one. So in the best case scenario, you play this card, to strength, your opponent doesn't like Wily or Spheres it. It pings five time and it's a seven for four. Is seven for four good? Yes, that's super good. One problem. Random. Uh, because it's random and because basically every single card in this set has armor attached to it, even if it's just one or two, um, a lot of the times this will randomly ping a card with armor. Which means it gets zero value. Um, also, this card needs five turns for it to get full value. Um, I think the card is okay. Uh, if, it, if you got to choose, I think the card would be insane. Uh, but because it is random, you're typically looking, you're, you're probably going to get like five or six value on average. Um, I think this card looks better than it actually is once you start realizing how many cards have armor attached to them. Uh, this card is going to feel pretty bad. Um, we'll see. I think it'll, it will be played in dwarf decks because it has the word dwarf on it. Uh, outside of dwarf decks, I don't think it'll see too much play. So I think it's a four star card in a dwarf deck and probably a two star card in other decks. Um, however, that number could change depending on whether or not people are running armor cards. If nobody is playing armor cards, uh, then this card is pretty good, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Also, Sapper is quite good against this card, and I do think Sapper is going to be auto-include in a good chunk of decks. So, yeah, not too excited about this card. It'll probably be pretty bad. Random gets around Defender. Yeah, but it randomly hits a card, so how useful is one random ping every now and then? I don't think this card will be that good. I think this card is, like, two-star. 
Uh, next card is Nickers. This is a neutral card. Nine provisions, three strength, one armor. Uh, this unit may raid the battlefield to aid you in battle. Uh, raid basically means it comes out at some point during the game. It's random. Um, it just randomly happens. You have no idea when this can come out. Uh, I, I've talked to some devs, but essentially there is some kind of code behind it. They're unwilling to give us the information, but apparently there is some kind of pattern with this. Um, we don't know what the pattern is. Um, I'm kind of hoping Shinmiri has like an Excel spreadsheet and writes down every time this card pops up onto the board. And maybe within like a month or two, we can hope to try to figure out how it works. Because if there are certain scenarios that procs this card... Uh, this card becomes incredibly good. Uh, if you can make this a controllable roach whenever you want, this card's insane. Um, now, is it going to be that case where you can control this card consistently? I don't know. Nobody, I mean, the devs know, but we don't know. Um, a little fact that you probably do want to know, uh, if you do not pull this card out in round one or two, it has to come out in round three. Uh, it will come out of your deck at some point in round three, so you're never going to lose the value if this card does not get summoned in round one or two. So that is important. Um, is this card good? I think this card is phenomenal. Um, I think this is better than Roach a good chunk of the time. Um, I don't know the odds of this card coming out in round one, but it's probably something like 50%, um, which means if you're playing a tempo deck, it's basically a roach with one extra armor for one P cheaper. Uh, in round two, it's really good because, well, if you're getting blood, you get three extra points. If you're bleeding, you have three extra points. That's really good. And in round three, three extra points of carryover is like game winning. Um, yep, basically, whenever this comes out, you're probably pretty happy. Uh, there is a scenario where your opponent wins round one, your card up in round two. You go into round two, your opponent passes for card advantage. And you have giant balls and you pass two and Nickers comes out and you win the round. And you get free card advantage and you win the game. Yep. However, if that doesn't happen, you lose. Because you have no points on the card or on the board. So well, I, I don't know the odds of it coming out, but let's say it's 10%. You have a 10% chance to get a free card advantage and a 90% chance to auto lose the game on the spot. Those aren't great odds. However, if you're in an unfavorable matchup, uh, it might be something that you have to do. Maybe you cannot win a 10-card round three, uh, and you have to take that risk. Don't know. Um, yes, I do think this card will see play. It is also a bandit, and bandits are going to see some play next or this patch because uh, there are a few good bandits, and there's a card called free whatever. I don't know. Um, yeah, this card's five star. Very good. Uh, okay, not five star. It's four star. It's not auto included in every deck, but it will see play in a lot of decks. Um, I am gonna play this in most of my decks. I'm gonna probably have a notepad or Excel sheet open because, and try to try to come up with a pattern for this because if you can control this card consistently, it's a five star card, easily. Then it's absolutely insane. Um, will we ever be able to get to that point? Uh, hopefully, we'll see. Um, I think this card is very good. Next card is Redanian Elite. Card's coming back into the game. Five provisions, one strength, four armor. Deploy, boost self by six. Expose, reset self. Um, on play, it's a seven for five. It seems like a lot of factions are getting seven for fives. If your opponent damages this by four, it goes down to one. So it's effectively, like worst case scenario, like a five for five. Um, I do think Erdin is going to be good this patch, and because of that reason, I think this card's not very good, because all the power is in the boost, so if you play this on a row and it gets Erdin, you're pretty sad. Um, yeah. I don't think this card is that great, but I, I do think it'll see some play. It is a 7 for 5, and the way you can look at it is, if your opponent puts damage into this, they're not damaging another engine. Cool. Cool. That's nice. I think it's okay. I think it's on par with the other 7 for 5s. I, I would rate this like 3 stars. It'll see some play. Yeah. It's a nice proactive card. Um, Bates removal. It's not bad. Next card is a Nilfgaard 5 provision card. 3 strength, 2 armor. Uh, it's a crossbowman. Uh, deploy damage an enemy unit by 2. Barricade damage a random enemy unit by 1 whenever you play a soldier. Uh, so on play, it is a 5 for 5. 
Uh, if your opponent damages this and knocks off the armor, um, it essentially becomes a 7 for 5. Is a 7 for 5 good? Yes. It is a 7 for 5 that if your opponent does not damage, continues to get value the rest of the game. Um, that's pretty good. It's very good. Uh, we also have new Nilf card cards that give armor and boost. I think this card is actually better than you think. Uh, if you morph in this, it's going to be very hard to kill. Uh, this card kind of sucks against cards like Wily or Spears. And I do think both of those cards are going to see play. Uh, Spears will definitely be auto-include. Wily will see a good chunk of play. It is also a bandit, which is kind of important. Um, it's random pings. Sure, it is random pings. But it's an engine with random pings. So it's not that bad. Wrong card on screen? What do you mean? It's not this card. You're, you're looking at... It's below. You're looking at this right here. Um, I think the card's okay. Uh, I think this card will see play in a soldier deck because you're going to run a shit ton of soldiers and if your opponent removes this, it's a 7 for 5 and you're not that sad. Uh, and even if your opponent does swear this, unless they're also playing a soldier deck, which actually they probably will be, um, I mean, in that case, you just play more of an on it. It's not a big deal. I do think this card will see play. Um... How would I rate this card? Maybe four stars? I think it's a little better than average. It's better than the average seven for five. Uh, I, I'd say it's probably four stars. I think it's quite good in a uh, Nilfgaard soldier deck. I'd say outside of a Nilfgaard soldier deck, this card sucks, but yeah, I mean, obviously. So you're, you're going to play this in a soldier deck. I think it's a four star card. I don't know if it's auto included in Morvin. Uh, it might be. I'm not quite sure. It's kind of hard to say. You kind of have to play the deck first. Living Armor. This is one of the cooler cards of the set. This is a neutral. 12 provisions, 10 strength, 10 armor. This unit's power is equal to its armor. So some cool things you can do with this. You can play Karanthir. When you Karanthir this, um, it comes out at 1 strength with 10 armor, and it goes right up to 10. That's kind of cool. Uh, you can play this with the Nilfgaard card. Uh, it's like alchemist or something. It flips the power of two of your units. If you flip this with a one, the one goes to 10. This goes down to one and then back up to 10, which is kind of cute. Uh, you can play this with any card that gives armor and it gets more value. There's only one problem with this card. Yeah, all those combos exist, but Iris Shade and Sappers exist. Sapper is a five for five, neutral, knock the armor off a card. Yeah, if you Sapper this, it kills it. Which means Sapper is a 15 against this for 5. Yeah. Also, Iris Shade, we'll get to in a bit, is a 10 for 5 that uh, knocks off the armor off a unit and boosts itself by the amount of armor knocked off. So, Iris Shade against this is a 25 for 10. Yeah. You lose. You lose the game. If that happens. Um, is this card good? No. Because you basically just auto-lose the game if you queue into it somebody who runs Irish Shade. And Irish Shade is going to be auto-include in a bunch of SK decks because of Draco Turtle, uh, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, yeah. This is a fun meme card. That's about it. It'll see play if people want to meme with it, but you're going to get blown out pretty hard. Uh, the exception is if you play the new Defender card, maybe in Monsters with Karanthir, uh, and if your opponent can't remove it, then maybe you can get some good value. Cool. I suppose. Yeah, there'll be some fun highlights. There'll be some fun decks that all in on this card, but it's kind of a meme, but it'll be a fun meme. Probably put it at, like, one star. <laughs> it, it, it's a pretty bad card, because the counters aren't just counters, they're just, like, complete obliteration like you just lose the game um 25 for 10 is game losing um so it's a one star card it's a three star meme card i or no it's a five star meme card i whatever it, it, it'll see play but it'll be a meme deck next card is a squatel card this is a nature card uh four provisions boost an allied unit by five if it's a dwarf give it two armor this is kind of cute with this dwarf down here um you can get extra value, but once again, I don't think this card is going to be that good because the damage is random. It's an okay card. 5 for 4 is not terrible. If you're playing this in a dwarf deck, I suppose it's okay. But here's the thing. In a dwarf deck, you want to play dwarfs. 
not this. And the non-dwarfs that you're going to be playing are going to be the cards that spawn dwarfs. So, yeah. Yeah. I I don't even think you play this in a dwarf deck. Um, what is this good in? Uh, nothing? <laughs> I'm trying to think of a scenario where you play this card. Okay, it's good in the Shoop Squaytail deck, but Shoop just got hammered. So, yeah, I don't think this card will see much play. Uh, I think this is, like, a one-star card. Honestly, it should just be boost an allied unit by two, give it to armor. Then I'd play it. That's significant. You can keep engines alive, but... Like, it's limited to a specific deck that doesn't want to run this card. So it doesn't make any sense. This card is not going to see play. One star card. Next card, SK card, Raiding Fleet, seven provisions. This is a gold special. Give an enemy unit bleeding for four turns. Play a random bronze ship from your deck. Um, I suppose it's good in a ship deck. How good would a ship deck be? I have no idea. Um, I kind of wish this was given enemy unit bleeding for two turns and boost the ship that you pulled out by two Because typically the ships that you're going to be playing are going to be engines So having that extra boost is going to be quite nice Um, do you think living armor with M here with alchemist will be playable? No, because you just lose to armor removal It'll be a fun deck and then you queue into Iron shade and then you're going to delete the deck Um, so yeah, this is kind of a cool deck in like a pirate ship deck Will this card be good enough to see play? Outside of a pirate ship deck? Okay, if you use this with a uh, light long ship, it's a tutor plus four. It's a three provision tutor. Uh, do you remember bleeding goes through armor? Uh, it's not... It's, I mean, uh, it's not that great. SK doesn't really care about thinning right now. It's okay. I think it's okay. I think you can play this in the ship deck if you really wanted to. The extra bleed is nice, I suppose. I think it's an okay card. If this card was 6p, I think it would see a lot of play. If this card is 7p, I think it'll see some play in pirate ship decks. I think this card is probably a 3-star card. I don't, it doesn't blow me away. I think it's okay. What tag does this card have? Uh, raid. Uh, next card is a Nilfgaard card. Pog. Uh, nine provisions, five strength, one armor. If moved to the top of your deck, summon this unit to the melee row. Five star card. This card's very good. Uh, combos you can use this with. Marvin, this is a soldier. So if you Marvin and you hit this, which you can if you want, uh, you get five points. That's pretty good. Uh, you can use this with Albrick. I wouldn't really suggest it, but I suppose you can use this with Albrick. Uh, you can use this with Novice, the card, the five for five that draws a card and puts a card back on top of the deck. If you play like Yennefer's Invocation, you put a card on top, uh, and then you play the Novice, and you swap. And if this card is in your hand, you get an extra five points on the board, and you top deck the card that you Invocation, which is not bad. It's a pretty good play. Um, also, nobody has proven this to work or not. I don't know if this will work. It really depends on CDPR's coding. Um, but this card is if moved to the top of your deck. So in theory, if you draw this card in the mulligan round and you click on this, you have a chance of putting it on the top. Which means if you get lucky and it hits the top, it's a Word Dancer. <laughs> it's pretty good. If you remember Word Dancers back in uh, beta, Word Dancers were cancer. They were absolutely insanely good. Turns out free carryover is pretty good, especially when your opponent wants to drive past you. Um, that's not what moving it to the top means. Um, I mean, you say that, but if you mulligan it, it's going from your hand into the deck, and if it goes on top, you are moving it from your hand on top of your deck. Based on the wording, uh, if you mulligan this and it does go to the top, it is mulliganing it to the top, which means you're moving it. It says move to the top. Yes, but you're moving it from your hand to your deck, which means you're moving it. It's being moved. Right? So, 
This is the type of thing where it comes down to coding. If CDPR doesn't want that to happen, they can code it that way. Uh, if CDPR is okay with it, then it'll happen. We'll see. I have no idea. This is the type of thing where you're just going to have to test it. Also, you can use this with the Sire, technically. Uh, if you thin your deck to zero and you play this card, or sorry, if you assire this card into your deck, well, if there's only one card in the deck, then it's on top, right? So it'll come back out. Uh, is that better than Roach? I mean, if you're thinning to zero, I suppose, but thinning to zero can be hard. Um, also not moving. It's moving from your graveyard to your deck. It is being moved. I don't understand. It's being moved. It's, it, it's physically moving. You, you could say it's not moving because it doesn't say the word move, but it's moving in the game. Okay. At the end of the day, I have no idea how this is going to work. We're going to find out in like 12 hours when this patch goes live. So will that work? I don't know. We'll have to see. If this card does work like that, if it does work like Old War Dancer, this card is bonkers. If it doesn't work like that, it's still going to be very good in Morvin, and I do think Morvin is going to be good. Morvin is getting an extra charge this patch. Uh, he's going to have four charges that boost too. So I do think this card is going to be good. Regardless of whether or not it gets mulligan, if you mulligan it, it can go on top. I have no idea if it will. Lee Shaisha with the 11 months. Thank you so much for the sub. Appreciate it. I don't know why it's muted. Oh, it's a different trap. Thank you for the 11 months. <laughs> this card's five stars. Very good card. Next card is Indrega Egg. This is a monster card. Four provisions, four strength. Death Wish spawn three drones on this row. Um, drones are good for AQ. So if you're playing an AQ deck and you're running Consume, which you most likely are, this card's pretty good. Uh, in Unseen Elder, it's a seven for four, which is comparable to a Harpy Egg, which is a for five. So yeah. Um, not to mention there's another four for four that consumes if it's insectoid. And this is insectoid, so it gets an extra point. So this card's actually pretty decent. It's better than it looks. Um, I'd rate this card four stars. Uh, inside of a Deathwish slash AQ deck. Basically any deck that runs consume, this card is just pretty good. I think this card's solid. Um, yeah, it's a good card. Next card, we have Trollololol. Uh, he's coming back. Northern Realm, seven provisions, four strength, two armor, zeal, order, lose all armor, and boost self by that amount. Resupply, gain two armor. Uh, this is very good in a resupply deck. How good is a resupply deck? I have no idea. Wave mode gifting four tier one subs. Wave Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Gem I do appreciate oh, it. It's a different trap. All right, let me, let me, can we get some pogs in chat for wave mode? Uh, th thank you for the gifted subs, man. For every, for anybody who got the sub, congrats. Backfish Hunter 236 with the nine months. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I think this card is kind of underwhelming. Um, will resupply be good? Eh, maybe. I think this is the type of card where this will be better in the future uh, with more resupply cards. Um, it has the potential to be good. I don't think we're quite there yet, but it has the potential. I think this card is two stars. I think it's a little bit below average. If this card was 6p, I think it would be much better, uh, obviously. Um, I I'd rate this two stars. It does have the potential to be better, though. We shall see. If people are not running a lot of removal, this card will work very well in a Demovend, Hubert, Shani, Trollololol, uh, Resupply deck, which I have actually played, and it's not that bad. It's actually pretty decent. Um, Shani is actually pretty good on this card, too, because Shani gives armor, so that's kind of cute. Uh, and there are a few good armor cards, so yeah, maybe this card's actually pretty decent with the new Bandit slash Wagon cards that give it armor. We'll have to see. I think the card is okay. I think it's okay. Maybe, maybe I'll give it like two and a half stars. I think it's okay. Talarion, thank you for the Twitch Prime. Appreciate it. What is the name of Morvin's ability? I, I don't remember. Next card, Syndicate, four provision, three strength, mutated hounds. This is a new uh, gang salamandra. Uh, one armor, deploy melee, give an enemy unit bleeding for two turns, deploy range, poison a unit. Uh, this card's nuts. Yep. 
This is like the best poison card in the game. Um, basically, if you don't need the poison, it's a 5 for 4 with one armor, which is fine. It's not amazing, but it's not terrible. You're typically going to be playing this card in a poison deck, and we're already seeing fist tech poison decks with like Cle uh, Cleaver, and this card is really good in that deck. It's more consistency, and it's super cheap. It's 4p. Uh, the only reason you wouldn't play this is that it kind of messes with your uh, portal, right? If you're wanting to be running portal, you can't really play this card. So that's going to hurt a little because portal is very good in Syndicate. However, with that being said, I never draw portal. So honestly, I will probably drop portal and play this card. Is this card good? Yeah, this card's nuts. This is a very good poison card. Probably the best poison bronze in the game, period. Uh, is it auto-include? No. Because of that portal um, obstruction that I just mentioned. I think it's a four-star card. I think it's very good. Some of you guys in chat are rating this two stars. Um, I think you're wrong. I think this card is very strong. I think it will see play. I will be auto-including this in every Syndicate deck because I love poison as a mechanic. I think this card is quite good. Next card. Dwarven Chariot, 5 Provisions, 3 Strength, Squirtle card. Do note, it is a Siege Engine, so we're getting a new category, which is kind of cute, I guess, for Dana slash Harmony. Uh, 3 Strength, 1 Armor, Deploy Spawn a Rowdy Dwarf on this row. Bonded, Spawn 2 Rowdy Dwarves on this row instead. 1 Star! This card blows. Um, yep. This card sucks. That's about it. This card should be 4 strength, 0 armor. Sorry, I'll rephrase that. This card should be 4p. Why should it be 4p? Because that's how much every other bonded card costs, right? Every other bonded card is 4p, 4, and then like bleed or vitality 2, and then plus 2. Yeah, it's slightly better because it's units, but I'm not paying 5p for this card. This card sucks. This card is not going to see play. You might run a one of in Dana because you want an extra tick on Dana's ability. Um, yep. You're not going to play this in a Harmony deck because it doesn't actually do anything for your deck. Rowdy Dwarfs are only good in a Dwarf deck. So, one star. This card blows. Next card, Mantlet. Neutral, five provisions. Four, sorry. Five provisions, four strength, one armor. Melee, whenever you play a unit, give it one armor. Barricade, give it two armor instead. This is a cool card. Uh, it's a way to protect your engines via armor. Uh, in some cases, you get extra value with uh, Draco Turtle and other cards that can utilize armor, such as like Trollololol. Um, I think this card is average. I think it's a cool card. I like that it's in the game. Um, if your opponent is expending removal on this, you're pretty happy because it means uh, there's an increased chance that your other cards live. Uh, I think this is a solid card. I think it's a three-star card. Um, if you're playing a bunch of engines and you can afford to run this card because you want extra survivability, yeah. Two extra armor is, is pretty significant. I do think this card will see play. I think it's pretty pretty solid. Next card, we have Redanian Knight. This card's coming back. Four provisions, Northern Realms card. Two strength, one armor, barricade range at the end of every allied turn. Boost self by one. Expose, move self to melee row, then damage the highest enemy unit by two. Um... I think this card is good in Meave. The reason I say that is because in a Meave deck, you can boost this to three, it goes to four, and then it has one armor, which is effectively five HP, which uh, most things don't do five, so this card will continue to live. Outside of a Meave deck, you can just do four damage to this, you can Wily it, you can Spheres it, uh, there's a number of different ways, you can Toad it. Um, yeah, which is kind of unfortunate. You can use this with Portal. The problem is with Portal, you're typically playing um, the 4P4 that pings for two uh, on the melee row, and this is range, which is kind of awkward. Um, also note, if your opponent kills this card, uh, like flat out, just straight out kills it, you don't get the random uh, two damage to the highest enemy unit. Also, if the highest enemy unit has armor, you're not really getting the two. So it, there's a lot of things going on with this card. It's, it, it's quite hard to evaluate. I I don't know how good this card is, honestly. I think it's good in Meave. In Meave, I think it's like five stars. In every other non-Meave deck... Uh, 
Honestly, I'd probably have to put it at like three and a half stars. Four stars. Um, I, I, I don't think I can say it's a five-star card yet. Not yet. The reason it potentially is a five-star card is because if your opponent removes it, it's just more engine bait, right? It's an engine bait that doesn't require setup, right? Or sorry, it's an engine that doesn't require setup and it's night bait. And if your opponent doesn't flat out kill it, it's actually quite good. Um, okay, I'll, I'll move it up to four star. It's a four star card, five star card in Meave. I think this card is very good in Meave. What is Meave? Okay, the, the leader that boosts by one every other turn. Uh, I do think this card is quite good. Next card is Natural Selection. It is organic, so it's going to be a little better in the new Arrakis Queen. Damage an enemy unit by four and then spawn an Arrakis drone on a random allied row for each excess damage dealt. Um, four removal is nice. Arrakis oh, Queen is typically uh, a deck that doesn't have too much removal, so this is welcome. Um, ideally, you want to play this and you actually want to kill something that has like one or two strength. The reason why is because you want more drones so you can utilize them with cards like Glusty. Um, I think it's an okay card. I think this card is like I don't know. Here's the other thing. Armor is going to make this card kind of bad. If this thing did, like, piercing damage, I would rate this, like, four stars. But because of armor, I think it's a three-star card. Um, I'm not going to go to two-star because Arrakis Queen can utilize this. Um, I think you, like, you, you play, like, a one-up of this in, like, AQ. Maybe two. Um, I'm Danga. Thank you so much for the seven months. Welcome back, mate. I think it's a three-star card. I think it'll see some play. I don't think it's two. I don't, I, yeah, I, I think, I think you'd be surprised. I think it will be okay. Uh, spawning extra Arrakis drones is actually pretty nice because you can utilize those. Next card, we have a new tactic for Nilfgaard Battle Preparation. Four provisions, boost an allied unit by three and give two armor. If it is a soldier, boost it by five instead, uh, pl plus the two armor. Uh, is this card good? Well, in Morven, you're going to be playing only soldiers, basically. So it's essentially a five for four with two armor. Is that good? Well, if you're playing engines, which you're probably going to, um, yeah, that's pretty good. You get to keep engines alive. I like that. Um, there's another card that utilizes this. We'll get to it in a bit. Uh, will this replace Tourney Joust and Nilfgaard? In a soldier deck, I would say yes. In an Ardle deck, the initial response is going to be, well, obviously not because you get removal. But if Ardle runs a few engines, I think this card's actually okay. Um, you have to remember if armor is getting added to the game, uh, your tourney jousts are going to be less effective. So yeah, I, I, I still don't think it'll replace tourney jousts in an Ardle deck. But I suppose you can run one of these. I do think this is a good card. I do think this card will see play in Morven. Um, how do I rate this card? I think it's above average. I think it's a four-star card. I'm not going to say it's a five-star card. I think it's a four-star card. I think it's good. Yep. Yeah. Uh, people... Oh, the other big thing is it's a good four-provision special. Why is that important? Uh, because Hyper Thin decks like to only play three bronzes for Vigo, and this is a bronze that doesn't suck. Uh, Ointment was typically the 4P card that you would play, uh, and this is almost always better. Uh, the only scenario where it wasn't is if you hit exactly one of the uh, brigades in the round that you played um, Vigo, but that wasn't too consistent, so I do think this is a very good card. I do think it will see a lot of play in Hyper Thin. Four star card. Next card, we have a neutral bandit, four provisions, four strength, barricade at the end of every allied turn, boosts self by one. I think this card is pretty decent. I think it's a three-star card. Here is why I think it's a three-star card. It is bandit. I do think people are going to be playing uh, a good chunk of bandits. It is pretty easy to get this armor on the card. There is a, we'll get to it at some point, but there is a four provision, uh, neutral, uh, four strength bandit that gives a unit in your hand two armor. So if you put two armor on this, it's pretty good. It's pretty good with uh, free whatever. It's a eight provision bandit card that boosts all your bandits by plus one. I think it's okay. Um, I don't think it's that bad. It's pretty good with wagon two. 
I actually think this card is going to see more play than you think. Which faction for bandits? Not Squayatal. Because of Harmony and Call. Uh, but honestly, you could probably run bandit kind of package in a good chunk of decks. Probably anything other than Squayatal. Uh, I I'm not sure, but I am going to be playing a lot of bandits tomorrow. I think bandits are going to be very fun. Bandits might be one of the more interesting things to play this expansion. So I think this card is okay. I think it's a three-star card. Uh, if you do boost this by... If you give it two armor in hand and you play it, it's going to have five strength after the turn ends, obviously, plus two armor, which is effectively seven strength. Um, if your opponent knocks off two armor, you're not that sad, right? If, if you put two armor on this, you're, you're getting roughly, like... You're getting two value out of the armor plus the, the five. It's like a seven for four, kind of. I wouldn't say it's a seven for four. It's like a six for four because you have to spend... Uh, you have to play the bandit that gives armor. But... You're not too sad about that. And if they don't remove it, it just keeps growing. I think this card is actually pretty good. I think it's a three-star card. Uh, next card is Armored Drakkar. This is a ship for SK, so it's a little bit of a push for uh, ship pirate SK deck. Five provisions, four strength, two armor at the end of your turn. If Armored Drakkar has no armor, gain two armor. Expose boost self by one. Bloodthirst two, boost self by two instead. Bloodthirst is going to be a little harder because people have armor, but... Um, this is the type of card that's going to work well with the gold tutor card that we talked about before because it gives bleeding, which is going to help you get that bloodthirst, and it is a tutor. I think this card is actually quite good. Um, you play this with Priest, and it's kind of nuts. I think this is easily 4-star, maybe even 5-star. So the reason why I'm on the edge of it being a 5-star is, once again, this type of card, you need to probably be playing it with priest right and obviously priest is a very good card so that's not really an issue but you're playing them on the same row um and the reason why that's important is because urdin urdin is a card that is going to see play next patch um and priest and this card both spoofs self uh in which case and Urdin is going to be very, very strong against uh, this kind of setup if you have two of these and two priests on a row, which is not too unlikely. Maybe not two and two, but like one of each. Um, yeah, I, I do think the card is very good. I think it's easily f like, okay, we'll put it at four and a half stars. It's definitely not auto include, but eh, okay, maybe it is. Priests are kind of auto include in every SK deck. This is very good with priests. Eh, okay, no, I'll, I'll put this at five star. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll go to five star. I think it's a five star card. I think it's very good. Next card we have Fifon Var. Gaynel, Garonel. Uh, nine provision. This is the defender for Nilfgaard. Two strength, two armor. Uh, spawn and play a battle preparation, which is this card down. here. I think I skipped it. This card right here. Um, I think this is one of the better defenders. Um, you can use this and play it on itself because it is a soldier. So it effectively, I believe it's five and two, right? So this goes to seven and, yeah, seven and four armor, which is a lot. Uh, and better yet, you can play this and protect an engine, which is pretty nice. I think it's going to be a card you're going to be playing in every uh, Nilfgaard deck. Because it has the word defender and you have the flexibility of having a thicker, beefier defender. Or you can just throw it onto one of your other engines that you want to see survive. I think this card is five stars. Because it has the word defender on it and the flexibility is very useful. Flexibility in general in card games is always a plus. This card is very good. Also, it is spawn and play a battle preparation. Why is that important? Well, assimilate gets plus one on this. And Assimilate is going to see play next patch. So this is an Assimilate proc, and it protects your engines. Yep, this card's nuts. Five stars. Easy peasy. Next card, Northern Realms, four provision, Mad Charge. This is a Warfare card. Uh, boost an allied unit by three and give it two armor. If you control a knight, also give it vitality for two turns. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, not a fan of this card. Why? There aren't a lot of knights in the game. And most of the time, I'd rather just play another engine. Right? Which would you rather play? This or Arbalist? Right? This is, like, you have to have an engine on the board and then use this to protect it. I'd rather just play another engine that my opponent has to deal with. 
and especially because Northern Realms has a defender, right? Like, they're probably not going to be able to kill all your engines, especially because a lot of armor, defender, uh, damage getting nerfed. So I, I don't think this card is necessary. Um, I don't think it makes a cut. Like, in every case scenario, I would rather be running this card over this card, right? You can't really utilize the armor other than protecting a unit. I'd rather just play that card. Um, yeah, I don't think this card's good. I think this card's shit. Um, I think it's one star. The only time this card will see play is in a Calanthe deck because it's a 4P card. Yup. Otherwise, this card is pretty bad. One star card. And even then, I don't even think Calanthe Shoop will be that good because Shoop got nerfed. Uh, next card, Indrega Larva Monster card, 5 provisions, 1 strength, 2 armor, Thrive, uh, deploy, spawn a base copy of this unit and summon it to this row. Uh, this card's 10 stars. Okay, maybe not 10 stars, but, well, it would be 10 stars, but, yeah, uh, the cap is 5 star. This card is insane. 5 star card, easy peasy, one of the best bronzes in the game. Um, the only, it, it's an enhanced Necker. Uh, the reason Necker isn't seen in every deck is because, well... It's not too hard to do two damage, right? Uh, dealing three damage is pretty hard. Well, it's not too hard, but the problem is you have to do three damage, and then you have to do four damage to kill a five provision bronze. And if you don't, this card goes to like five or six strength each. Uh, this card's insane. This card is auto included in every monster deck. Um, the only scenario where Necker is better than this card is if nobody runs any form of removal. And you play Defender, you play this, and then, or the Neckers, and then they don't die and you're happy. Um, or you just play both. Maybe you play one Necker and two of these, and then Defender. Yeah, this card's insane. Auto included in every deck. It is so good that Erden is going to get more value. I honestly, people are Omega lolling my Erden comments in chat, but I honestly think Erden is going to be good. But you don't have to believe me, you can just get blown by it tomorrow. We'll have to wait and see. Next card, Piercing Missile, neutral, five provision damage, an enemy unit by four, ignore its armor. So this is kind of similar to bombs, right? Bombs go through like shield, or sorry, like purify, or it can banish, this now goes through armor. Is this card good? I think it's okay. If you're needing cards to deal with engines that have armor and those units have three or four, or yeah, three or four strength, this card's not bad. Uh, does it replace bomb? Maybe. Um, the thing is, most decks don't really run bombs, so I think people play like a one-of with this card. Uh, you can play Telekinesis and have access to this card. I think it's an okay card. I think it's a three-star card. Um, I don't think it's going to be auto-included in every deck across the board. Um, but if you're running Telekinesis, which I wouldn't be surprised, Telekinesis is a pretty good card, uh, this card is something you might want to consider running because it's not bad. Having the option of hitting it is pretty decent. Is this card tactic? I don't know. No idea. I don't know if it's tactic or warfare. I have no idea. It's neutral, so it might just be like a spell. Next card, Boat Builders. Five provisions, five strength. SK card. It is a ship. Deploy. Give two armor to an ally. Order. Give one armor to an ally. If you control a ship, gain zeal. Welp. Uh, there's a card called Draco Turtle, and this card helps that. It is similar to Wagon, except it's 5P. Five strength instead of 4P. Four strength. So, if you're playing Wagon, you play this card too, because why not? Um, yup, good card. Um, I don't think it's auto-include. I think it's a three-star card. Um, but there are definitely going to be decks that auto-include this card. If you're playing a Pirate Ship deck, you probably play this card. It's pretty decent. Uh, if you're playing a Draco Turtle deck, you're definitely playing this card. Um, yep. Yeah. Very good card in a Draco Turtle deck. Next card, Mutant Killer. Five provision, four strength. Deploy damage an enemy unit by one. Zero star card. This is going to be the only zero star card in the set. This card sucks a lot. This is like the worst card, not in the game because we have like clear skies, but this card sucks. It's terrible. Horde seven, damage an enemy unit by three. Yeah, whatever. Um... So, Horde 7, it's a 7 for 5. Who cares? It's, it's not impressive anymore. This card sucks. This is like... I would rather play Wolf Pack than play this card.
This card is atrocious. Uh, this card should be damage an enemy by like at least two, horde seven, do four or something. Maybe that's too good. Um, but this card is terrible. Uh, Glynus Ape, uh, Lornak, Lornak, I don't know, I can't pronounce names, you guys know this. Seven provisions, four strength, three armor, assimilate, two! Um, yep, five star card. Well, okay, it's not auto-included in every deck, but it's auto-included in every assimilate deck, and the reason you play this card, or the reason you play assimilate is because of this card. This card is absolutely insane. Five star card, easy peasy and assimilate. Um, assimilate two. All right, let's put this into perspective. When you play an Assimilate card, like 4 Strength, and it doesn't die, uh, they typically go to like 8 to 12, okay? So you're looking at like 4 to 8 boosts. Now multiply that by 2. 8 to 16 boost. Yeah. This can easily get to 20. Um, yep. And once again, you know I'm going to say it. Erden's gonna come through and smash this card. Yup. I'm playing Erden tomorrow. Um, this card's gonna be very good. It's very hard to kill. Effective 7 HP. Um, this card's insanely good. Which is why Erden's gonna be played. <laughs> Next card, Minor Harmony. Damage an enemy unit by two. Uh, sorry, five provisions, three strength, Harmony. Damage an enemy unit by two if you control a Rowdy Dwarf. Ignore its armor. One star card. I think this card's shit. Um, I don't really want harmony on dwarfs. Uh, the thing is, rowdy dwarfs are only going to be played in dwarf decks. And I don't think this is better than other 4 or 5p dwarfs. Right? Also, if you're playing a dwarf deck, harmony is useless. So it's a 5 for 5. Sure, you can kill the, the new enhanced snackers. That's about it. That's the only scenario where this card is good. I think this card is terrible. One star card. Next card. Armored Crab Spider. Eight provision. Six strength. Two armor. Deploy. Apply bleeding to an enemy unit equal to its base power. This card's pretty good. Um, if your opponent plays a high value card. Or sorry. A high strength card. It's not that bad. Uh, yes. Purify is going to see a lot of play. But once again. I think this is going to be the case where. You're not too unhappy if your opponent purifies the card. Because. Well. Means your defender won't get purified, right? Um, and if you run enough bleeding, well, they can't purify everything. I think this card is very good. I think it's a four star card. I don't think it's auto include, uh, but I do think it is a four star card. I think it's very solid. Next card Monroe Broys, 11 provision square to gold, 7 strength, 1 armor, deploy, transform 2 allied rowdy dwarves into dwarf berserkers. Um. They nerfed this card. It used to be transformed to adjacent dwarves, and then they decided to kill the card. Um, meow. Don't like that change, because it is basically only playable in an all-dwarf deck. So, yeah, if you're playing a dwarf deck, it's good. If you're not playing a dwarf deck, it's like a 7 for 11. Yeah. I think it's okay. Once again, the Dwarf Berserkers are random pings. It's like a three-star card. You're going to play it in a Dwarf deck because you're playing Dwarfs. But outside of a Dwarf deck, this card sucks. It's pretty underwhelming. I'm honestly kind of mad that they nerfed this card. Um, also, this card being seven strength and one armor. Yes, it has effective like one extra or like half an extra HP on like random pings from your opponent. But there's a new Bandit card that flip-flops armor and strength. And... That card is like seven provisions, five strength. On this, it's a six point swing on this. So all these cards that have high base strength and one armor all suck against that card. And that card's actually pretty decent. Um, so that one armor in a lot, in some cases is actually gonna be detrimental, um, which is kind of unfortunate. But yeah, I think it's a three star card in a dwarf deck. I think it's a one star card outside of a dwarf deck. Next card is a monster card, Kikomore Queen, 11 provisions, 5 strength, 2 armor, Thrive. Whenever Thrive of this unit is triggered, boost all allied insectoids on this row by 1. Uh, this card's really cool. Um, one notable combo, if you play Karanthir with this, it goes to 1 strength, and because the Karanthir comes after this card hits the board, it immediately procs a Thrive. So you can play Karanthir into this, and you immediately boost the entire row of insectoids by plus 1. 
that's good. Uh, and then if you follow up with this, that Thrived card is going to get boosted. And then all the Insectoids get plus one. And then if you play like an Ice Troll Giant or whatever, which just, which just got buffed by 1P, everything gets plus two. Yep. Guess what I say? Erden. Yep. Erden is going to be very good against this deck. I, like, I, I, <laughs> people are still unconvinced about Erden, but basically every combo that comes up with and gets a lot of value is all boosted. Guess what counters boosted Rose? Erden. Yeah. Uh, I think this card is pretty cool. People are going to build entire decks around it. Uh, I think it's a neat card. Um, I think it's like a four-star card. It's kind of hard to evaluate because... I don't know how prevalent uh, Thrive or Anti-Thrive decks will be. I, or sorry, Anti-Swarm uh, decks will be. Um, I don't think people are going to run too much wide removal simply because if there's a decent chunk of armor, you're going to be losing value on cards like Last Raid and Crushing Trap. So I think this card is okay. I think I think it's a, like a three and a half, four star card. Um, once again, if Erdin is meta, this card sucks, but we'll have to see. Next card is a Syndicate for Provision. Damage an enemy unit by four if you control two Salamandra units. Deal six instead. Um, there's a few new Salamandra cards added, um, but yeah, I think it's like a two-star card. I'm not going to rate it at one star because doing six damage for four provisions is quite good. Um, the condition isn't too hard. Uh, the poison Salamandras that we talked about a little earlier were... Salamandra cards. Um, I think this card is okay. You might run it with like TK to have a, a little bit of flexibility on removal. I think it's okay. Two star card. Yeah. Next card uh, is a neutral bandit, four provision, three strength, one armor. Highway man. Deploy damage an enemy unit by one if it has armor, damage it by three instead. So this card shines against the enhanced Snackers, right? Because they have armor and it does extra damage. It is a bandit. Um, I do think this card will see play, but not for the reason you think. I don't think people are going to put this in their deck, but they're going to play Gascon. And for those of you who don't know, Gascon is a neutral card. 10 provisions, 4 strength, uh, create a bronze bandit. This is a bronze bandit, which means if you're playing Gascon and your opponent plays an enhanced Necker, you can play uh, Gascon, create one of these, and then kill one of the Neckers, which is pretty good. Um, so this card will see onboard play via Gascon. I don't think you're going to put this in your deck. It's pretty underwhelming, uh, other than the exact case that I just mentioned. So in terms of putting it in your deck, I think it's a one-star card. But it will see play because of Gascon. Next card is Wagenberg. Neutral, five provisions, three strength, three armor. Barricade at the end of every allied turn. Give one armor to adjacent unit. This card's pretty cool. Um, I played a Mimi deck with uh, Karanthir, Living Armor. I'd play two Living Armors. I'd play this in between the two. Uh, and then Arid in it. And then the two Living Armors would get two points a turn. Which is, or each of them would get plus one a turn. Uh, which was kind of cool. Except my opponent plays Iron Shade. And it's like a 30 point swing. Because the Living Armors were bigger. So yeah. Um, this is good in that deck. The problem is that deck sucks. Because there's two neutral cards that hard counter uh, the deck. Um, this is similar to the other neutral that basically gives armor. Um, I think it's okay. I think it's a little worse than that one. I think it's like two and a half stars. I, I don't, I, I think it's a little better than two stars. I think it's okay. I like that the card exists. Uh, if there's engines you need to protect, it's pretty good. It's pretty cool with Trollololo, I suppose. Um, also you could play this and then wait a few turns and then knock off all the armor with Iris Shade and get some boost. So I think it's okay. Uh... Granted, I think sappers are going to be auto-include, so yeah, the knocking off the armor on this is going to be pretty easy. It's probably just a two-star card. Uh, next card is Ergen. Monster card, 10 provisions, 13 strength. Yes, that is a 13 for 10. Uh, comparable card is Spear Tip, which is a 9 for 10. Deploy gain armor equal to the number of cards in your hand. If this unit has no armor, destroy self. Not sure why they didn't use... Uh, yeah, uh, what's the thing called? The new mechanic where if it doesn't have armor, it knocks off. Um, yeah, expose. I'm not sure why they don't use the exposed word here, but whatever. Uh, this card is a five-star card. Why is this a five-star card? It is high risk, high reward. However, you can play this towards the end of the game. Um, if your opponent doesn't have any damage, it's quite good. You can play this in round one if you need to catch up. A lot of the times when you play Spear Tip in round one for monsters, you're basically playing the game. 
And then whenever your opponent passes, you play this giant spear tip, uh, and then you plus one on all your Thrive cards. This is that for 4P cheaper and one strength bigger. It's also bigger for Azrael, which is a 14 now instead of a 13 with spear tip. This card's nuts. This card's very good. Uh, you can go as far as running this card and spear tip and ADC, uh, and you'll draw one of them naked, and then you ADC the other one. This card is very good. Very, very strong. Don't play this at the beginning because your opponent's going to knock it off with the Iris Shade or uh, Sapper, and then this card's going to suck. So you do want to save this. It's going to be... I, I really like the design of these cards where it's high risk, high reward, because you have to think about what you're playing against. If you're playing against a deck that has zero removal, you can just slam this really early. If you're playing this against a deck that has a lot of removal, you're going to have to time this uh, pretty well. Why are the Squirtle cards so meh? I don't know. Squirtle cards this patch have been pretty underwhelming. Um... Yeah, I mean, if you're a dwarf player, it's great. But if you're not a dwarf player, yeah, pretty bad. That's kind of unfortunate. But it's okay. We have Isengrim's Council now. So, yeah, easy five-star card. Next card, Redanian Archers. Five provisions, three strength, two armor, zeal, order, range, damage an enemy unit by one, charge one, barricade at the end of every allied turn, gain one charge. So this is a engine that gives itself damage every turn or charges every turn um on play it's a three that pings for one it's a four for five with two armor if your opponent knocks off the armor it's effectively a six for five it's not terrible um but if your opponent doesn't remove it it's super good um it's not random you get to actually choose i think it's a four star card i don't think it's a five star card uh if this card had four strength or three armor or was four provision, I would easily say it's a five-star card. Um, but yeah, I think it's just a solid card. Um, it's good in a Demovin deck. I actually think Demovin will see some play. The reason being is I think people will run fewer removal. And because of the new defender in every single faction, it's going to be easier to protect engines. So people are going to be less incentivized to be running more removal. So they'll probably run fewer. Uh, and in the case of this card, it's not terrible for Demovin. Demma Erden, yes, I know, I know. Pumpkin is saying cards that see zero play might actually see play next patch. Who would have thought? I think this card's pretty good. Four stars. Next card, we have Raymond Ty Tyre Con Connell. Uh, ten provisions, four strength, two armor deploy. Spawn and play a base copy of a bronze soldier from your hand and give it two armor. So if you're playing a soldier deck, you can play more soldiers. You can play this with Slave Infantry. Unfortunately, Slave Infantry was nerfed a little bit and now has four strength. Um... Giving two armor is pretty significant because you can give units like enforcers uh, a little bit more survivability or just any of the uh, engines in general. Uh, giving extra survivability to engines is never a bad thing. It's also a soldier, which is good in a Morven deck. I think this card is five star in Morven. I think it, it just checks off all the boxes. It's a soldier. It's high P. Does good things, puts multiple bodies on the board, adds more survivability, adds another engine to the board. It's kind of similar to Queen Adalia. Uh, instead of a shield, it gives armor. Um, I think it's a good card. I think it will see play. Uh, it is not a Northern Realms card. It is Nilf card. It shows blue. It's not blue. CDPR trolled McBearded when he revealed this. It is a Nilf card card. It is not NR. I think it's a very good card. Five stars. Uh, will this card see play outside of Nilfgaard? Or, sorry. <laughs> outside of Morvin? Um, I think it'll see some play. Not as much as in Morvin, but it will definitely see play. Next card, we have Ard... We have Tortoise. Uh, why, yeah, sure. Tortoise. Five provisions, seven strength. This is a Nilfgaard card. Two armor exposed boosts the highest uh, power enemy unit by three. I think this card is actually really good. Uh, I really, really like this card. Um, the reason being is if your opponent puts two damage into this, you're not too sad because it means you're not damaging other soldiers like uh, engines. Um, you're looking at what? A six for five? But it's not really a 6 for 5 because A, you're denying engine removal on your other cards because this is absorbing it. And boosting your opponent's tallest card is not bad. Right? You're playing Nilfgaard. What are you playing? Peter. You're playing Leo. And you're playing Erdin because Erdin is punk. <laughs> but yeah, you're playing 
uh, Leo, and you're playing Peter, and so you're already killing the tallest card, and this just pushes it, right? So in the case where you're playing Leo and Peter, this is a 7 for 5, and if your opponent puts damage into it, it's like a 9 for 5, because the boost doesn't really matter. It's like effectively a 9 for 5 if your opponent damages it. So in mo right, and your opponent's not going to damage it. So this is the type of card where it's basically just a seven for five in all cases. If your opponent is silly enough to damage this, you're kind of happy actually. Um, and then every now and then it'll absorb random pings, in which case you're like, like in most cases you actually want your opponent to damage this card, which is weird. I think this card is phenomenal. I think this card is almost auto include. I think it's a five star card. I think this card's nuts. Um. And we're walking into a meta with a lot of tall cards, so boosting already tall cards is not an issue. Uh, I think this card's 5-star. I think this card's great. Um, I'm playing Nilfgaardian Knight, the 7 for 5 that boosts by 2 in my Nilfgaard list right now, and I love the card. And this is better. This card's nuts. I love this. 5-star card. Easy peasy. One of the better bronzes in this expansion. Next card, this is a Pirate for SK, 4 provisions, 2 strength, 1 armor, deploy damage a unit by 2. If it is ally, boost self by 4. Um, this works very well, Drakkar, uh, the Drakkar ship, because it's exactly two. Um, is this card good? Eh, I think it's okay. I think it's a three-star card. I think you play this. I, I think it's okay. If you're playing Drakkar ship, which you probably should be, I think you do play this card. In which case, it's probably a four-star card, because it's just free procs on Drakkar. Uh, in which case, it's just like a six for four with one armor, which is fine. The only reason this card is bad is... Arden. Um, otherwise, yeah, I think this card's pretty good. Yep. Four-star card. Good card. Next card, we have Sappers. I've talked about this card a lot. This card is an easy five-star card. Absolutely insane. It's a five-for-five. Five. Remove a Eunice armor. You coon to living armor. It's a 15-for-five. Uh, if you queue into any deck that has barricade, you're knocking off armor. This card is insane. It is also a bandit, which means you can create it off a of Gascon, which means, yes, you will see this card in a good chunk of decks. You will see Gascon in a good chunk of decks. You're going to play this card, and you're going to baby rage about this card because you're going to try to play a living armor deck, and your opponent's going to play this card. You're going to smash your keyboard and wonder why you're playing a living armor deck. Yep, this card single-handedly makes living armor unplayable, along with Irish Shade. Um... Five-star card, easy peasy. Um, honestly, I would not be surprised if this card got nerfed to 4P because it's not really... It, it is a tech card in that you're, you're teching in specific strategies, but it's like a super-duper good tech card uh, because there's armor in the game, and removing armor is typically not terrible. So, yeah, this card's just nuts. Uh, the, the floor of this card, I suppose, is five, but people are going to play armor, so it's probably like, like a six and a half floor and the ceiling is like 15. yep there's really no other bronze in the game that has like a 15 ceiling this guy's absolutely insane auto include um yep definitely put this in your deck especially at the beginning because people are going to try to play mimi living armor decks and you just auto win yep this card is insanely broken five star card uh lambert is getting a rework nine provision six strength damage an enemy unit and all his copies by two uh, yeah. This card's quite good. Uh, I don't know why we're rating this card. I, I guess we can rate the card. I think it's a four-star card. I think it's better than you think. Um, if you hit two units without armor, it's a ten for nine. That's not bad. That's playable. Um, I think it's pretty decent. Uh, it's also very good against NR. NR has Drog and they play Commandos, and this is good against both cases. Um... I think full test will still probably be good after patch because why not? Uh, full test is good this patch. I don't think full test got nerfed, so it's still going to be good. Um, the other reason why this card is good is because Kiko Queen, which we mentioned earlier, which boosts all your ones uh, to two or all your insectoids, which are most likely going to be ones, uh, they go from one to two. And then you play Lambert and wipe the entire row. Yep, this card's pretty good. I, this card's going to see a lot of play. I think it's a four star card. Uh, if you have the provisions and you just need a good value card, just throw this into your deck. It's quite good. Very strong card. Uh, next card, we have another bandit neutral. Four provisions, four strength. Iron Falcon, true bad door. Uh, deploy, give two armor to a unit in your hand. 
This card's actually pretty good. This is a four-star card. Um, there's a card called Draco Turtle, which we'll get to in a bit. Uh, it's 12 provision, SK card, 6 strength, 6 armor. Uh, every armor it loses, it boosts itself. Uh, and you're able to knock off armor pretty easily with Iris Shade. Uh, that combo is going to be quite good. And this is pretty good with it. Uh, there's also a ship in SK, which is deal damage equal to its armor. This increases that damage, obviously. It's, like, kind of carryover. It's like an agitator. If you can actually utilize that armor on Trollololol, it is a better agitator. This card's actually pretty good. Uh, it is a bandit. You can pull it off of Gascon. If you can actually utilize the armor, this card is quite good. You can play this with the other bandit card where if you have armor, it boosts itself by one. Yeah, this card is going to see play. Uh, it's definitely not an auto-include card, but in the decks that can utilize armor, yeah, it's carryover. Carryover's good. Stats are good. Four for four. Agitator sees play, and it's a two for four. Um... Yeah, this card's really good. Four stars. Next card, Radovid's Royal Guard. Four provisions, three strength, formation, order boost an allied unit by two, inspired boost an allied unit by two, and give it two armor as well. Uh, is this card good? Yeah. So if you play this on the melee row and you boost it with Meave, right, uh, you're looking at what? Two, five... You're looking at 5 for 4 plus 2 armor, which I don't know how you evaluate that. But most of the time, honestly, I'm just going to play this on the range, bro. If my opponent wants to dump damage into this, I don't really care. Uh, you can utilize this with Trollololol, I suppose. I think this card's pretty good. I'm not going to put it at 5 stars. I don't even know if I'd put it at 4 stars. So here's the, the big question. Which would you rather play, this card or the new Redanian Knight, which is the... Is it Redanian Knight? The, the one that gets plus one every turn on range throw. Which would you rather play? I think I'd rather play that one because it's an engine. However, it's pretty decent. Giving It's a body that... It's, it's basically strictly better than the special that gives like two armor, two boosts, and like vitality or whatever. Um, both? Yeah, you, you could play both. I do think this card will see some play. I think it's like a three and a half star card. I, I wouldn't put it at four. Uh, I don't think it's better than the Knight card, uh, but I think it's okay. I think it's a solid card. Um, yeah, it's a good card. You're, you're not going to be too sad if you play this card. Yeah, it's good. Three and a half star card. Next card, Salamandra Assassin. Five provisions, four strength. This is Syndicate, obviously. One armor. Intimidate, deploy, range, damage an enemy unit with bounty by two. One star. Yep. Uh... We've been playing Syndicate for a while. Intimidate isn't, like, crazy. It's not as good as Harmony or Thrive. It's okay because you don't go ham on crimes. Um, yeah. Honestly, in my opinion, I think this should just be damage an enemy unit with... Just damage an enemy unit by two. If it has bounty, do, like, three or something. Um, and, like, knock off the armor. I, I think this card is pretty underwhelming. The fact that if you... Don't have a bounty on your opponent's side of the board. This does zero damage. Is really bad. Yeah, I think this card's like a one-star card. I think it's pretty bad. Um, we did get one extra card in the set that gives bounty, I believe. Professor, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, but I think the card's pretty underwhelming. There are better fives to play. I don't think you play this card. Next card, we have another bandit. Four provisions, one strength, one armor to play. Give two random enemy units bleeding for two turns. Yep, basically, this card is in the game to make Gascon a little worse. <laughs> um, because you're not going to want to play this. I think it's a one-star card. I don't think this card will see any play. It'll see play. Yeah, no, it won't see any play. Um, if the, I honestly think it should be deploy... Give two enemy units bleeding for two turns. I don't think it should be random. In my opinion. And even then, I don't think the card would be that good. Um, yep. I mean, so it has armor. You might wonder, well, why on earth does this have armor? You have no reason to protect it. Once again, like random damage. If this absorbs a random damage, it's pretty decent. But I don't think you're going to play the card. Um, in a vamp deck, it's better than cutthroat. Sure. I suppose. But cutthroat, you get to choose. Yeah, okay. Maybe in a vampire deck. This sees a little bit of play. Maybe. This card's pretty bad. Yep. If this was choose, I think it would see a tiny bit more play. It would go up to two stars, but 
in its current version. I think it's a one-star card. Next card, we have an SK card. Four provisions, two strength, two armor, terror crew, axe wielder. Deploy damage an enemy unit by two. Expose damage a random enemy unit by two. Um, yeah. Random. Hmm. It's okay with the pirate that we scrolled through earlier that damages a, uh, damages a unit by two. Uh, do you really want to play this card? Nah, I don't think so. I think it's... I, I don't think it's unplayable. I think it's a two-star card. You can play this with a uh, Drakkar deck. It is a pirate, which means if you need more pirates in your deck, you can play this card. I think it's a two-star card. I, I don't think it's unplayable. If Okay, if Drakkar... The Drakkar ship did not exist. I would put this at one star. Otherwise, it's probably a two star card. Yeah. It might see a time to be able to play in pirate decks. We'll see. 4P slots are typically quite competitive for SK, so I don't think it'll make the slot, but eh, you never know. And Drago Warrior, four provisions, four strength. Consume adjacent units, spawn a drone on this row for each consumed insectoid. This card's really good. Um. I think this is a five-star card. Um, in Deathwish, you can't play all in Deathwish because you don't have enough consume triggers. This is two consume triggers, which is really good. It's a 4P double consume trigger. If you consume the new Deathwish card that has uh, four strength, uh, the insectoid one, it's a five-point play. Uh, plus the, the pullout. Uh, I think this card's very, very good. It's good in Arrakis Queen because it's a six for four, and that's just good. Six for four, because you're going to be running Insectoid, or the drones. Um, yeah, this card's a five-star card. Uh, I don't think it's auto-include in decks outside. Basically, if you're playing any kind of Deathwish or you're playing AQ, it's a five-star card. Outside of those decks, you're probably not going to play it, because well, why would you? Um, but yeah, th this card's very good. Very, very strong card. Next card, we have the Dryad from this set. Five provisions, five strength. Deploy, give an allied unit vitality with a duration equal to its armor. Eh. eh. It's interesting. Some of you guys are saying this is one star. Sometimes some of you guys are saying it's up to four stars. Um, I think this card is pretty bad, honestly. What cards are you giving vitality to? Like you can use it with the new Dwarf Berserker card, I suppose. But so, like on the Dwarf Berserker, it's a nine for five. Okay, but we've already gone over Dwarf Berserker. I don't think that card's gonna be that good. Um. You can play it with a new nature card that gives two armor. Once again, I don't think that card's good either. So, is there any other Squatel card that has a lot of armor attached to it? Living armor? You can't give it to living armor. A, because living armor, if you play living armor, you auto lose. But two, uh, vitality doesn't work on living armor because it doesn't get boosted. So, I honestly don't think this card is that good. I'm not gonna put it at a one star. Because if you play the Dwarven Berserker or whatever, it's a 9 for 5, and that's good. Problem is, you probably won't, and 5P slots are super competitive in Squirtle. I'll put it at 2 stars. I don't think this card is very good, honestly. Um, yep, yeah, I think this card is quite underwhelming. Next card, Mutant Human, Mutant Salamandra. This is uh, nah, Syndicate, 3 for 2 Intimidate. Uh, seems like they're adding these to the game. Uh, we have the dwarfs that do this. Now we have this card, similar to Nilfgaard, where we have Assimilate on a four. Uh, now it's they have one that's three strength, two armor. This card is... One star! Um, the dwarfs, the only reason they see play is because of justice, uh, and you can spawn two at once. Yeah, no reason to play this card. One star card. Next card, Wagon! Are we going to rate this card five stars? So, it's obviously... So, when I said the condition for five star, I said auto-include. Obviously, it's not auto-included in every deck. But in the deck that runs this card, it's a 10 for four. Is this... Is a 10 for four good? Yeah, it's pretty decent. Um, so, Draco Turtle, once again, uh, utilizes this card very well because the three armor is plus three on the Draco Turtle and then the Iris Shade gets plus three on it. So you get three, three, four. So it's a 10 for four. That's pretty good. 
Not to mention it works decently with this card right here. Uh, I think this card is quite good. This card is going to see a lot of play. I'm not going to put it at five star. Eh, okay, it's a five star card in a Draco deck or a Draco Turtle deck. It's a four star card in like other decks. Um, if you can utilize the armor, it's a seven for four, which is really good. And a Trollololol deck, this card's really good. It's just a good card. Um, this is better than you think. This is much better than you think. Uh, this is easily a four star card. This is one of the better neutrals in the set. What card gives two for one for armor? Uh, Draco Turtle plus Iris Shade. The combination of the two. Um, next card, we have Terror of the Seas. SK card, seven provisions, four strength, two armor, zeal order, lose all armor and damage an enemy unit by that amount. Whenever you play a pirate, gain one armor. So, um, by itself, it's a six for seven, which is obviously garbage. But if you're playing a Draco Turtle deck and you're playing the new bandit that gives armor and you're playing um, this card right here, and maybe you're playing a few other pirates, then this card's actually not that bad. Um, if you play the pirate on this and give it plus two armor, doing four damage is pretty decent. Uh, I think this card's actually okay. Uh, the idea is you play this card and you play Draco Turtle, and maybe you have the bandit in round one that gives two armor. Uh, this one down here. This card right here. Um, and if you play that card, and let's say you don't have Draco Turtle in your hand, this is a second option to give armor to, which is quite nice. And having more uh, units to give armor to is not bad. I will Ooh, turn this on off in just a second. Um, I actually think this card is going to see more play than you think. Um, I think it's like three and a half stars. It's good in a pirate ship deck, and it's good in a Draco Turtle deck, and I think a Draco Turtle deck is going to be quite good. So I actually think this card is pretty decent, because it's another card that can utilize armor. And that's good, because you're going to be running, like, four cards that give armor. So, uh, potentially even six if you're running the ship card uh, for SK. I think this card is actually pretty decent. Um, I think it's like a six-speed card. Or, sorry, like a three-and-a-half star card. I think it's pretty decent. Uh, and removal is not something to scoff at. Removal is typically quite good. Um, Broman, thank you for the prime sub. Appreciate it. Actually, maybe I'll just turn my... Ah, uh, something's annoying. I'll just rotate a little. Uh, next card, Dire Mutated Hound, five star card. Syndicate, eight provisions, four strength, three armor, barricade at the end of every ally turn, boost self by two, fee four, gain one armor. Uh, this card is broken. Yep, broken. Um, you play this card, it's six strength. If your opponent damages this card, they're effectively losing three damage, in which case it's a nine for eight. It's a nine for eight engine. That's insane. Um, yep, this card is auto-include. Uh, the fee is pretty expensive, but just don't pay the fee, right? This card's insane. Um, and guess who says hello? Erden. Erden says hello. A lot of these insane cards that get tons of value are all boosted, and Erden is a hard counter to all of them. Erden says howdy do. Yep. Erden is going to see a lot of play. Uh, next card, Kikomora Worker. Monster card, 5 provision, 7 strength, 4 armor. Melee, whenever you play an insectoid, gain 1 armor. Expose, destroy self. Um, this is another one of those high risk, high reward cards. Uh, if you immediately consume it with something like Karen or Barbagazzi, it's just a 7 for 5, which is decent. Um, problem is, once again, Sapper is going to be auto-include, and Sapper trades up on this thing really nicely. I don't think this card is that good honestly i think it's like a two-star card i don't think it's unplayable uh but i don't think it's that good honestly um like in most cases i'd rather just play griffin right right griffin is now five provisions eight strength why would you play this over griffin probably would um yeah Yep, I don't think it's that good, honestly, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, it's good for Andrega Queen, but I don't know if that's a good enough reason to run the card. So I, I, I don't think it's that good. Does Exposed work? No, the, the melee, it's just this part right here, right? It's not like if you play this on ranged, Exposed is nothing. Otherwise, it would be very good. Next card, we have Armor's Workshop, Neutral, 6 Provision, Boost 3, Adjacent Allies by 2, and give them 1 Armor. Eh. You have to be running a lot of cards with Barricade for this card to be good, right? I think it's kind of underwhelming, but I mean, I suppose it's good to exist. I think it's a two-star card. I don't think it's unplayable because maybe you are playing a deck with a sh 
ton of barricade, in which case this card's pretty good. But otherwise, it's pretty underwhelming. So, oh, we'll give it two stars. Next card, Assimilate. Ard, whatever. Heavy Cav. Uh, four provisions, no guard, three strength, two armor, assimilate. Five stars! Uh, this is better than the current assimilate card. Uh, the four for four because it has higher survivability, and survivability is all you care about because these cards go to insane values. Um, yes, this card will see play. This is auto-include in every assimilate deck. This card is very, very strong. Erden sends his regards. Yep, Erden, yep. Very good card. Kafu now. Thank you for the host. I hope your stream went well. Um, Zoltan's Company. Six provisions. It is a nature card. Spawn three Rowdy Dwarves on an alley row. Five star card. Uh, this card is insanely good in a dwarf deck because, well, dwarfs typically are bad because it's hard to get on the board. This puts three dwarfs on the row at once, not to mention it's Rowdy Dwarves, which we have other dwarfs to synergize with it. Yep, easy five star card. Probably won't see too much play outside. Of, eh, I might see a little bit of play outside of Dwarf. Maybe you play this in like a Spellatel deck because it's like six and it's if your opponent wants to remove it, they lose value because they have armor. I guess it's okay. Um, but yeah, five star card in any kind of Dwarf deck. Uh, this is what a Rowdy Dwarf looks like. Two strength, one armor, doomed. Uh, War Council, eight provisions. Uh, this is a Nilfgaard card. Tactic, look at the top three cards from your deck and play one. So it's Kahir on a special. Wow. Uh, is this card good? Um, I am not convinced. Calvit, you know what I mean. I always, yes, Calvit chat. I always mix them up. It's Calvit, the leader that plays from top three, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I think the card's okay. Um, it's better than uh, the two point spy that people are playing in Hyperthin. I suppose it is a tactic, which is nice for Ardol. I don't know if it's a five. I don't think it's a five-star card. I don't think it's auto-included in every Nilf card deck. I honestly don't. Um, I think it's a four-star card. I do think it'll see play. I think it is definitely a card you're going to consider in a Hyperthin deck. Um, works well with Invocation, I suppose. I think it's okay. I think it's, a, I, I think it's like... I don't even know if I want to say four-star. All right. 3.75 stars. We're not going to go down to 3.5. We'll just 3.75. I, th I think it's a solid card. I think it will see play. Voimir, Northern Realms card, 7 provisions, 5 strength, 1 armor. Deploy boost an allied unit and all its copies by 1 and give it 1 armor. Cool. Uh, it's like a Vreem D for NR. Uh, it's pretty good with Drog. Pretty good with Commandos. It's really not that hard for this card to break even. Two of the same unit and it gets 7 plus the armor. If you're playing Drog... Or scouts, you're getting way more than seven value, and you're giving them armor. Is this a five star card? I think it's a five star card in full test because you have two different very good plays that get a lot of value out of this. Outside of full test, I'm not sure. What does Erden do? Nothing. The same as before. Centurion Knight synergy. Yeah, I guess. Um. I think this card's good. I think it's very good in full test. Uh, I don't think it's auto-include. Uh, it's probably like four stars because it's very easy for this card to break even. Very easy. So I, I think it's a solid card. Four star card. Not going to put it at five because by no means is it auto-include. Next card, Donamir of Troy. This is the Northern Realms Defender. Nine provision, six strength, two armor, and shield. And Defender. Um... I pre-rated all Defender cards for five. Um, Defender is going to be the best in Northern Realms because they have the scariest engines that are insane if left unchecked. It's a five-star card. Honestly, of all the Defenders, it might be the worst. The reason I say that is the shield is kind of irrelevant. Um, the reason I say this is because, yes, the shield is relevant if your opponent wants to kill this. But no one's going to kill it. Just purify it. Um, yeah, so... It's just going to get purified. So the shield is kind of irrelevant, but whatever. Uh, it still does its job. It's a defender in a deck that's going to want defender. It's still a five-star card, even if it is probably the worst defender. Next card, five stars. <laughs> it's like the best card in the set. Uh, yep, they didn't nerf this card in PTR, so yep, this card's broken. Five-star card, 10-star card, 50-star card. This card's absolutely broken. Um... 
All the stars. It's a syndicate card. Nine provision, six strength, profit two, tribute nine, spawn ace, Falvolus, frightener on this row. That card is 12 strength. Yep. Um, it's insane. Uh, we have Madame Louisa, Madame Louisa, which is ignore your next tribute cost, which means if you play that card into this card, the tribute's free. So you get two profit, you get a six body, so you're getting eight value, and then you're getting a 12. So you're getting 20 for nine. Plus you have to play Louisa, which is a six for nine. So you're getting 26 for 18 over three bodies. Uh, okay, three bodies plus like two profit, which is never bad. Uh, you're getting six armor and you're getting uh, Louisa has intimidate. Is that good? Yeah, that's broken. That's absolutely broken. Um, also, Syndicate kind of struggles right now putting points on the board. The way Syndicate gets points is either transforming profit into points or like using bounty and damage on your opponent's side of the board. Well, now you have a way of getting lots of points in a turn, especially at the end. Um, a lot of the times, Syndicates just kind of struggle spending all their coins or your opponent is playing no unit or few unit or have like one explosive turn at the end and Syndicate can't really counter that. Well, now they have their own play, which is absolutely insane. Uh, this card is absolutely broken and we'll see play in every deck. Uh, the only reason you don't play this card in your deck is if you can't fit it plus Louisa. But if you can't fit it, you should fit it because it's broken. Um, yep. And even if you pay the tribute, you're not even that sad. Uh... So this, it shows that it's bronze. I'm really hoping it's gold because if it's bronze, it's even more broken because you can purify this, which you're going to run purify because Calcasine is the best purify in the game. Uh, you can purify this and then you can necromancy it. You can play necromancy for 12. That's very good. Uh, people were playing Spectre Knight on Caldwell at 10 and that was good. This is a 12. That's insane. Also, if this is bronze, you can Igor this. Is spending three to make a 12 good? Yeah, it's decent. Um, is it three or is it four? I don't even know. Or is it five? doesn't matter. Any number under 12? It's very good. Um, yeah, it's spend five. But it's still insane. You're trading up seven. Uh, this card is absolutely broken. If it's bronze, it's the best card in the game. If it's gold... It's still one of the best cards in the game. Um, it's just not as abusable with Necromancy and Igor. Um, this card is good enough that... Well, Erdin doesn't counter it. So maybe you play Gigni, but... Playing Erdin and Gigni is typically overkill. So I don't know. Uh, fun fact, you can Vivian this and it one-shots it because... It has zero provisions because it's a token. Or, you know, you just Leo it. Uh, yeah, this card's absolutely broken. Syndicate is going to be monster next patch. Next card, we have the Defender for SK. Nine provisions, seven strength. Defender, Berserk six. That's the end of your turn. Gain one armor. So you play this card, or you play it next to a priest, or you play a priest next to this. Uh, it knocks it, and then it keeps getting armor every turn for the rest of the game. Yep. Five-star card. Absolutely insane. It is a Defender. All Defenders are five-star cards. Uh, if you're playing SK, you're playing this card, because protecting engines is never a bad thing. And yeah, five-star card. It's cute. I actually met this guy in person. I don't know if we're allowed to say who it is, but I know who it is. <laughs> it looks identical. Uh, next card, Armory. Six provision, neutral. Boost a unit by six and give it three armor. Um, well, it's pretty simple. Can you utilize the armor? If you can't, it sucks, right? Because it's a bad swallow. Um, thing is, the cards that can typically use the armor are already tall cards, so you're making them even taller and more susceptible to tall removal or resets. And tall removal or resets, aka Erden, are going to be seeing a lot of play. I don't think this card is very good, honestly. But, yeah, it's just a filler. Next card, we have Percival. This is not one provision. It is seven provision. It is a Squirtle card. Um, this is, like, the best Squirtle card in the set if you're not playing dwarfs because all the other cards are dwarfs. Four strength, three armor. Yeah, Harmony 2. That's pretty cool. It's our first Harmony 2 card. We got an Assimilate 2 card dispatch or expansion. Now we get a Harmony 2. Uh, is Harmony 2 good? Yep. Uh, it is also a Gnome, which is cool. 
which is an easy way to proc other harmony card. Is this card good? Yep, five star card. Um, the only reason you don't play this card is Erdan. Uh, so if Erdan is meta, you probably don't play this card, but we'll have to see. Um, I think it's quite good. It's another way to easily proc all your harmony, and harmony two is pretty nuts. So yeah, good card. Next card, we have Draco Turtle. We've been talking about this card a lot up until now. There's a lot of cards that synergize with this. New SK card, 12 provision, 6 armor, 6 strength. Whenever this unit loses armor, boosts off by the amount of armor it loses. 5-star uh, card. This card is absolutely insane. One of the better cards this expansion. This card was so good, they had to double nerf it in PTR. This card was 7 strength, 7 armor, and it was broken. It's still probably broken. Uh, the only saving grace of this card is Erden. <laughs> Um, the reason this card is better than it looks is because there's another card called Irish Shade, which we've also mentioned a, a good chunk up until now. Irish Shade is... Mm, we're losing the voice. Uh, 10 provisions, 5 strength neutral, remove all armor from a unit, ally, or enemy, and boosts off by that, amu uh, that amount. So if you play this at 6, you Irish Shade it. This gets plus 12. Irish Shade gets plus... Tw uh, not plus 12. Gets plus 6. Irish Shade gets plus 6. And it's pretty good. Uh, you can use this with uh, Wagon. Wagon gives it 3 armor, which means plus 3 on this, plus 3 on Iris. You can use the new Bandit, which is plus 2 on this, plus 2 on Iris. Anything that gives armor is doubled up on this plus Iris. This is so good. You might even be able to play a, like, Iced Sig deck where you play this multiple times because it's that good. Uh, and you have that many cards that give armor. That might be so good that you have to start running Heat Wave because really the only way to hard counter that deck over three rounds is to Heat Wave this card. Um, yep. If you're losing to this deck a lot, Heat Wave is uh, like a multiple Draco Turtle deck. Uh, you probably want to run Heat Wave because it is a very nice counter. Um, there's also a new Bandit that flip-flops the armor and strength on a unit. And I'm pretty sure it would lose armor. So... That bandit is a 5 for 7, I believe. And on this card, flat out, is 6, right? That's pretty good. It's 11 for 7. It's quite good. Obviously, all of these combos are very susceptible to tall removal or resets. AKA Erden. 5 star card. Uh, next card, 1 eye, Betsy, 10 provisions, 4 strength, 2 armor, deploy damage in enemy unit by 4 if it has armor, damage it by 6 instead. Power crep to Frit, rest in peace of Frit. Um... Four-star card. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I don't think it's a five-star card just because I don't think it's auto-include. On PTR, it did eight damage instead, uh, which I think would be five-star, but they, in my opinion, correctly nerfed it. I think it's a four-star card. Um, doing six damage is pretty relevant. There are a few... Or, or, there's a good chunk of engines that have armor attached to them, and they're typically all under the effective HP of six, so, yeah, I think this card's quite good. I think this card will see play. It's a good card. Oh, it's a bandit! I didn't even know it was a bandit. Okay, 4.2 stars. If it's a bandit, it's a little better because I'm going to be playing bandit decks because of the next card we're about to get to. Free company, 8 provision, 6 strength, neutral, 1 armor, deploy, boost all allied bandits by Juan. Um, they're adding a lot of bandits, and bandits that exist right now are going to be slightly better. Uh, Strays is going to be better because movement is pretty good. Um, I think this card's really good. Uh, any deck where you're running a bunch of bandits, this is a five-star card. Um, it's obviously not auto-included in every deck because if you're not playing bandits, this card's pretty bad. Um, you have this card, which is a bandit. You have the new Gascon, which we'll get to in a bit. You have, um, Sappers, which is going to be an auto-include card. You have Wily, which is actually a very good card because, well, very simply... Wily ignores armor, so if your opponent plays a 3-strength unit with any amount of armor, Wily one-shots it, and this boosts it. So basically, if you can run a deck with a bunch of bandits, which isn't that hard because the bandits are very good, uh, this card's quite good. So yes, this card is very, very strong. I You can rate it 4 or 5-star. If, if you're playing a bandit card or a bandit deck, this is 5-star. Um, I do think there will be decks that run Dopplers and bandits because all the bandits are humans, and yeah... If you can play the rest of the deck with humans, then you get really big Dopplers. I think this card is phenomenal. Great card. I love the fact that they're pushing a neutral archetype package that you can throw into any deck. I would have preferred it to be Dragons, but we'll settle for this. I love the card. I think it's great. Very much looking forward to playing this card. Next card, Syndicate. Six provisions. Sorry. Six strength. Eleven provision. This is the Professor. Five-star card. 
Deploy, put a bounty on an enemy unit and damage it by three. Tribute three, ignore target's armor. Uh, ignoring target's armor will come into play every now and then. Uh, the big thing is it's a card that gives bounty, also damages. So worst case scenario, if you kill a three strength engine, it's a 12 for 11. That's not bad. You can use this with wholesome um, and give a unit bounty, do three damage, and then use your leader and do seven damage. So kill really large units. Um, I think this card is very good. It's another way to give uh, bounty, and it also does damage, which is never a bad thing. I think this is... Ugh, I can't speak anymore. I think I'm going to have to get some water. I think this card is five star. Um, meh. Auto include? I mean, is there any syndicate deck that doesn't run, like... Yeah, I, I think it's five star. I think this card is very good. I think this card is insane. Next card, we have Indre Indrega Queen. Monster card, seven provisions, five strength, one armor. Consume an allied unit and gain its armor. Barricade. At the end of your turn, damage yourself by one the spawn. I drawn on this row. This card's kind of cool. We have a few. There's the uh, the two Kiko cards that we talked about a little earlier and like Ergen that have armor. Um, so you can consume them and get a lot of value. This card's kind of cool. It keeps uh, spawning drones on the row, which you can utilize with other cards like Clusty um, or like Kiko Queen. I think this card's pretty good. Um, do note, if you row cap, you keep taking damage on your armor, but you probably weren't going to use that armor effectively anyway, so not that big of a deal. I think it's quite good. Uh, I'm not going to put it at 5-star, but I think it's a solid 4-star card. Um, if you play this on living armor, which I don't suggest because I don't suggest you playing living armor, um, it's plus 10 strength, plus 10 armor. Which is really good. But I would not suggest playing Living Armor. But, I mean, you can do whatever you want. Um, yeah, maybe maybe a little higher than 4 star. Maybe like 4.5 stars. I think this card's quite good. It's essentially a 5 for 7. That gets plus 1 every turn. And your opponent's typically not going to kill it. Um, ah, I'm still going to stick to 4, 4.5 stars. Next card, we have Surrender. This is a neutral card. Eight provisions remove two armor from all units on a row and damage them by two. Uh, this is basically an enhanced lacerate. Uh, if you're worried about your opponents having a bunch of armor and you losing value on your lacerate, this is better. Um, but the problem is, if your opponent has cards with more than two armor, it's kind of bad. Um, I think this is... It's very hard to rate this card because this can easily be a one-star card and it can easily be a five-star card. Here's why. Um... If people are playing Arrakis Queen and they're going super wide and you need to be doing two damage to a row, normally you'd run Lacerate. The problem is if you queue into a deck with a bunch of armor, Lacerate gets zero value. So this is the middle ground so that you still get that two damage to the entire row and then against decks that have armor, you're still getting a good chunk of value. So I think if, we're, I think if we go into a wide meta, I think this card is pretty good. If people are not playing wide decks, this card is trash. So it's like a two to four. Or like a 1 to 4. It honestly depends on the meta. It has its place and it will see play at some point. Um, yep. Next card. Nilfgaard. Uh, light Cav. 4 provisions. 2 strength. Damage an enemy unit by 2. If it has armor, damage it by 2 instead. Uh, I think it's a 1 star card. The only case where I think this is good is... The Enhanced Neckers. And the Scarabs from the new Defender and Syndicate. I don't think that's a good... Like, okay. The only time this card is going to see play is if Monsters is like 60% of the meta. Because the, the Enhanced Neckers are going to be auto-include. And this card is very good against them. But unless that deck is super popular... This card's pretty bad in most other cases because the only times this card is good is if A, you hit a card with armor, and B, you kill the card, meaning you have to be killing a card that is an engine. And there aren't too many engines that are at four strength, effective HP. Most of them have three strength, two armor, right? So if this was, if the arm, if the target had armor damage it by three instead, I think this card would be good, but it's not. So I think this card is bad. I don't think it'll see much play. Next card, I've talked about this a little bit before. This is the 5 for 7 Bandit Neutral. Swap a unit's power with armor. Um, this card is better than you think. Uh, if you do this on Living Armor, it does nothing, obviously. If you do this on Draco Turtle, 
it's plus six or however much armor they have which effectively makes it an 11 for seven which is nuts uh it is a bandit which means it works very well in a bandit deck uh it's also very good against a lot of the cards in the game that have like i don't know a bunch of the dwarfs are like seven strength one armor this is six strength or a six point swing on those cards because you sw switch the one and the the seven for a six point swing uh this card's nuts i think this card's great um there's gonna be some there's probably gonna be some kind of like combo oriented deck where this card gets a ton of value which i'm looking forward to whoever comes up with this is it confirmed that it works like that i don't remember but honestly i'd be surprised if it didn't i'm gonna assume that it does uh but once again i don't actually know even if it doesn't work like that i still think this card is very good it is a bandit honestly i'm r probably most excited to be playing bandit next patch um gascon's very good this card's very good one-eyed betsy is very good uh the new gascon's very good uh the wolf not the wolf uh knickers is very good there's just a lot of really wily is very good sappers is very good uh the new card that boosts all the bandits is very good i think bandits are going to be very powerful next patch um which is very exciting speaking of we have another bandit which doesn't actually get value from the card that boosts all bandits because well 10 provisions seven strength old gear's power cannot be changed yep cannot be changed uh you cannot damage this you cannot bleed it you cannot vitality it you cannot boost it nope nothing um how good is this card it's kind of similar to the immune dragon in Squirtle. it's kind of immune right obviously you can interact with this you can lock it and then damage bleed boost vitality whatever you can do all those different interactions um but can you poison this yeah you can poison this yep you think epidemic is going to be good next patch no uh i like this card a lot i think it's very cool you can do some cool things in monsters if you karanthir this uh it comes out at seven strength which is kind of neat um if your opponent has random damage this just absorbs all of it i do think there will be a monster deck that runs karanthir in this card uh it's not that bad uh it's a 10 point play and any random damage just hits this uh you can also adrenaline rush this which is pretty funny because uh, your opponent can't kill it granted they can purify it or lock it uh but they can't flat out kill it immediately i think this card is cool um it's pretty good against random damage decks it has infinite value against weather i suppose uh it's probably the best art in the expansion this is probably my new favorite art and my guess is the premium is amazing um you cannot earn in this <laughs> um one thing is one interesting combo that may or may not work it kind of depends on how cdpr coded this card um it says old gear's power cannot be changed it does not say old gear's power cannot change from seven so in theory you can lock it boost it with like garrison or something boost it to 17 and then purify it and in theory it should stay at 17. however there's a chance cdpr hard-coded this to simply be old gear's power cannot be changed from seven in which case it'll reset down to seven um there's no way of knowing because cdpr coding is cdpr coding so we'll see we'll see i have no idea how that will work um and if that is the case technically uh you could adrenaline rush a 17 into the next round and it shouldn't lose the boost because like normally if you uh adrenaline rush a card into the next round and you boost it it loses the boost in between rounds but if old gear's power can't be changed i don't know Rysik says it stays at 17. Okay, well, that's pretty pog then. Um, well, expect some uh, carryover immortal decks with Adrenaline Rush. That's going to be pretty fun. Um, wait, does that mean you can woodland this? So I'm assuming this is an effect that applies when it's on the board, but not in hand. So in hand you can hand buff this i'm assuming with cards like uh tris butt or woodland or any like king of beggar or not king of beggars whatever it is francis now uh or uh smugglers i think this card is going to see play and it's going to make for some very interesting decks obviously it's still susceptible to tall removal like Geralt, leo uh gigney scorch coc uh it's still susceptible to all those types of cards but it is a very cool card i'm glad it's in the game there might be some degenerate deck but you can still interact with it it's like if you have any form of tall removal it's still going to kill it um 
I'm assuming it would work with Stregobor, right? It would go down to one and then you play it and it goes back up to seven. So maybe you make a Mill Stregobor deck with this card. Who knows? I think the card is great. Um, it's kind of hard to rate the card because there might be some broken combo that nobody's thought of. And this could be like a 10 star card. Um, I think it's great. Honestly, you could probably just throw this into your deck and it would just be like an average value card because you can look at it as infinite armor if your opponent does random damage, right? So like, I don't know. If, you're play if your opponent is playing SK and they have cards that give random damage or bleed or like Dagger Herald, this denies all of that. It works with Alchemist switching. Oh, that's kind of cool. Up to six value. Huh. 10 point. How much P is Alchemist? I think it's five. You can play Priest on this. You can play Butcher on this. This card will see play in SK. I think it's a great card. I love the card. It, you're going to see a lot of play. It's 4P. I think it's 4 strength, 5P. If it's 4P, then that's actually a decent combo. Um, I'm just going to rate this at five star. I think it's great. I love the card. Might not be the best card in the game, but I think it will see a lot of play. Iris Shade. We've talked about this card a lot. Five stars. Easy peasy. Yep. This card plus Draco Turtle is bonkers. Uh, this is a 25 point swing against Living Armor because, well, Living Armor dies and you get plus 10. Yep. Absolutely broken against Living Armor. This makes Living Armor unplayable. Um, yep. Auto include in any kind of Draco Turtle SK deck, obviously. Um, yep. Super, super strong card. 5P or 5 stars. Uh, we have Geralt Axie. This is a neutral 5 strength unit, 2 armor, 10 provisions to play Purify and Reset a unit. I'm glad they added it to the game, but honestly, it's kind of underwhelming in my opinion. I wish it was Purify, Reset, and Lock a unit in that order. Um, or it was like either one strength more or like one p cheaper i think it's pretty underwhelming um it's like a neutral peter but most of the cases i'd rather just play urden than this right when do you ever need to purify and reset a unit maybe if they play defender and boost it that's it nobody's gonna do that um well probably not i think this card is very good okay hold on i need this sun is getting annoying We had to turn the sun off. Um, Nilfgaard Defender. Yep, against Nilfgaard Defender, but I don't think that's a good enough reason to run this card. Um, I think it's okay. I think uh, in its current form, unless I'm missing something, I think it's like a two-star card. It's not unplayable. It's an okay-ish tech, but eh, I put it at two stars. Two stars. I don't think it's that good, honestly. Uh, Gascon! I'm very excited about this card. Human Bandit, neutral, 10 provisions, 4 strength, 3 armor deploy, create and play a bronze bandit card. We have a few good bandit cards. Um, we have Strays. We have Sapper. Sapper probably being the best one. Uh, and more importantly, it puts two bandits on the board, which is very good for free power, or whatever this card is called. Free company. Um, this card's really good. I love it. It's fantastic. You're going to be able to create a... Uh, there's also artifact removal. Um, there's just a decent and like strays for movement. There's a decent amount of techs that are on the bandit cards. So a lot of the time, I think there's a total of seven bronze bandits. So almost 50% of the time you're going to roll the card you want, which is pretty good. Um, yep. This card's going to see play. If you're running a bandit deck, this card is auto include. Um, yep. I think this card's, uh, do I put this at five stars? Honestly, this card is good enough that I think you can play this in a non-bandit deck. Because the text that you can pull out of this card is insane. Uh, we, If you guys remember Midwinter Patch, one of the strongest cards in the game was a... It's the, uh, I don't know what it's called anymore. It's the one that gets boosted by uh, when traps flip. But basically, it was create a special card. 
or sorry, create a bronze Squirtle card. And you could roll Weather Clear. Uh, this card was absolutely insane. Uh, this card people complained about forever. Um, it was just absolutely bonkers. Creating an answer is very good. Now, the variance on this card is much, much, much lower. Um, I think this card is phenomenal. I think this card is great. Uh, the way this card sucks is if they add more bad bandits and or they take the existing bandits and nerf them. And at this point, the only one that I would think gets nerfed is maybe Sapper. Even then, if Sapper gets nerfed by one strength, I still think the card is insane. This card is very good. I'm very much looking forward to playing it. Um, next, we have Azar Jeved. This is Syndicate's Defender. Nine provisions, three strength, profit three. Spawn a Scarab on the row, which is this card right here. Uh, tribute three, spawn two instead. Uh, almost every time you're going to be spawning two unless you need the profit three for something else. Uh, it's a five-star card because it has the word Defender, and this is the only Defender card in the game that makes two Defenders. Um, these guys have a little bit of an extra thing if you kill them. Uh, the player who plays them gets an extra two coins, which is kind of cool. Um, this card's very good. So basically, if you want to have access to your opponent's row who played this card, uh, you gotta kill two of these. Best way to kill two of these is, ironically, play Syndicate and play Executioner and give both of these bleed one as they simply die. Um, yep. Five-star card, very good. Auto include in every Syndicate card. Next card, Zoltan Warrior, Squatel, 12 Revision, 6 Strength, 1 Armor, Melee, spawn 2 Rowdy Dwarves on this row, range, Boost all allied Rowdy Dwarfs by two. Uh, we have a few cards that spawn Rowdy Dwarfs. I think this card is a five-star card in any kind of Dwarf deck. Outside of a Dwarf deck, I think this card sucks. Outside of a Dwarf deck, this is basically like a 10 for 12. Is 10 for 12 good? Nope. It's a 12 for 12 with Oak, I suppose. Is that good enough to play it? Mm, no. Eh, no, probably not. There are better 12s to play. Um, I'd rather just play Justice over this. Um, yep, auto-include in Dwarf decks. Five stars. Outside of Dwarf deck, don't play it. Next card, we have another Dwarf card. Figus Mer Merlozu. Okay. Uh, nine provisions, four strength, two arm, five stars. It's, it has the word Defender on it. Yep. Uh, this is one of the few cards that are being added that you can play outside of a Dwarf deck because it has the word Defender on it. Uh, spawns two Rowdy Dwarfs, which is fine for Oak, and it protects your other engines. Is this card good? Yep, it has Defender. Um, in terms of survivability, it's the worst one, because doing six is the easiest way to kill this. However, with that being said, the extra two Rowdy Dwarfs are kind of nice, simply because it's more bodies on a board for Oak. Oak is a very good card. Um, yep, good card. Five stars. Next card, Morkvark. Heart of Terror, this is an SK card. 10 provisions, 5 strength, 1 armor. Deploy damage an enemy unit by 1. Repeat until target is damaged. Um, so the best cases for this card is Living Armor. It kills the card. Really good against Old Gascon, right? I mean, no one's going to play Old Gascon, but I guess you can mention it. Very good against Azrael, right? Azrael is all boosts and 1 strength, so it just straight out kills the Azrael. It's also good against armor cards. Uh, if your opponent plays a card with a bunch of armor on top of it, it'll kill all the armor and then do 1 damage. Um... Card's good. It's a good card. Good against boost. Good against armor. We're going to see a lot of uh, boosting. It's really good against the new Assimilate 2 Nilfgaard card uh, because it'll basically rip that down to 3, which is very strong. It's a good card. And it's a high P card for SK. Uh, I think this card's... Wait. This card's really good against Draco Turtle. Uh, is it? Okay. So... I don't actually think it does. So I right like I don't think Draco Turtle is coded so that this card does six damage to Draco Turtle. Draco Turtle gets boosted by six, and then it takes another seven damage from this. I don't think that's how it works. Typically, uh, it does one card at a time. So the way it's going to work is this is going to damage it. It's going to knock all the armor off, and then Draco Turtle is going to get damaged one more. This card is going to stop, and then Draco Turtle is going to get plus six. That would be my guess, because typically uh, cards finish their effect before wait, letting the other card go off. Um, so I'm pretty sure this will not work like that. It will just knock off the armor and then do one damage, and then the Draco Turtle will get plus six. What if you play this on uh, Old Geared Immortal? If you play this on an Old Geared Immortal, which I do not suggest you do, because it will do nothing, 
Uh, it'll basically just ping it a bunch of times. I don't know how many times. Um, my guess is CDPR put in like a hard cap of like 100 or something. Um, maybe 50. I don't know. It won't do any damage. It'll just ping it a shit ton of times. Your opponent will emote you and you'll sit there for like 30 seconds. Uh, it doesn't go forever. I've already asked, right? It's not going to like crash the game or anything. Um, I do think there will be an old geared or mortal uh, bug that does crash the game because it's very hard to perfectly code it against every interaction in the game. So my guess is there's probably an interaction in the game that will break the game uh, and it'll just take some time and it'll get hot fixed. But there's probably one of them out there. Um, somebody's asking, will this boost great sword? So like if your opponent plays immortal and then you play this card and have a great sword on their row, uh, it'll infinitely, not infinitely, it'll, it'll stop at some point, but the great sword should not get boosted because you're not actually doing damage. Um, yeah, if this is hitting armor, it won't boost the great sword. If it hits the boosted units, it'll boost the great sword. Right. Now, how good is this card? I don't know if I want to say five star. I think it's a four star. It's easily a four star. The reason I don't want to auto include it or put it at auto include five star is because it is expensive. Um, and it might not you might not be able to fit it into your deck. So I think it's like, okay, we'll, we'll meet in the middle and put it at four and a half star. I think it's a very good card. Really depends on matchup. Oh well, yeah, and that's the other thing. If your opponent is playing a deck with zero boosting and zero armor, this card's a five for 10 and it sucks, right? So, okay, we'll go back to four. It's a four star card because it's kind of meta slash matchup dependent. Next card, Philippa is back. 11 provisions, one strength. This is obviously Northern Realms. Deploy damage an enemy unit by four, then damage a random enemy unit by three, two, one. Um, very good against portal. It's always going to kill the portal engines. Um, I don't think it's a five-star card. The reason I don't think it's a five-star card is because armor is in the game. If you play this in the middle or towards the end of a round, you're going to be hitting... A you're especially because a lot of these cards have armor attached to them there's a decent chance you're hitting cards with armor and you're losing value right in a perfect case scenario it's an 11 for 11 and you remove engines and that's assuming you don't overkill any engines i honestly think it's a three star card uh and some of you might wonder why on earth is this 11 for 11 11 for 11 nowadays isn't that great um but you have to remember it's removal and removal is always going to be priced more than like uh like boosting right so if this was like boost a random ally by four three two one um it would probably be 10p or like two strength it, it would be buffed but removal is going to be more expensive which is why that is the case for this card um honestly i think it very much comes down to how much armor is in the the meta game if there's a lot of armor this card's kind of underwhelming outside of like very early on removing uh portal otherwise it can start to lose value. So we'll see. Honestly, we'll see. I, I have no idea. Maybe there's an engine that your opponent plays that's 10 strength and you need to just kill it. And this does that. So we'll see. We'll see. I have no idea. Uh, it's also, is this good against Fob Water? Fob Water is 10. This does 10 damage. You do four to one of them. And then the random pings. Yeah. I mean, well, it's good as long as the three damage doesn't hit the Fob. Because if you do four to the, the four and then the three hits the two, then you can't kill it. So you have to win a 50-50 in there. Okay. Um, but yeah, this card's okay. I think it's playable. I think it's a three-star card. Potentially four-star card if people aren't running a lot of armor. And last but certainly not least, we have Shani. Nine provisions, five strength, obviously NR. Two armor, formation, order, give an allied unit vitality for one turn. And one armor, charge one, inspired, give an allied uni, unit vitality for two turns, and one armor instead. Is this card good? Yep, five-star card. Um, one of the issues with demo event or any kind of charge deck is running out of uh, engines that transform charge into two damage, or, or two value, I should say. A lot of the times, with your charge, you're only getting, say, one value, but with cards like Hubert, you get two, and with this card, you get two, two and a quarter, two and a half, depending on how much you uh, value armor. I think this card is phenomenal. Uh, you're going to play this card. Your opponent's probably not going to be able to kill it because it's going to be at six strength and two armor, and 
<laughs> your opponent's probably not going to kill it. Uh, and you can give uh, extra value to every card you play after that. Any engine you play after this Shawnee, you're going to be able to immediately boost it by one and give it one armor, which is a lot of survivability. Uh, this card is very good. Very, very good. Very good in a charge deck. Very good in a Demovin deck. How good would those decks be? Um, they should be better because of the new defender mechanic and because people should be running less removal because the defender is in the game. So I think this card is very good. Um, obviously, if you're not playing any kind of add-ups or Demovin or any kind of cards that give charge, you're probably not going to play this card. But, I mean, e even in that case, it's still an 8 or 9 that gives one armor. Ah, you probably don't play. So you, you have to be playing cards that can give charges slash Demovin. Uh, and then this card's a five-star card. I think this card's very good. And that's it.